I'm gonna try to keep this as short as possible for the sake of time, but welcome to the final video of this channel. And I do mean it. The final, final video. Not everyone here has seen my community posts or follow me on other platforms, so I owe it to myself and most everyone here to finally have some closure instead of, you know, fucking off and never looking back like I just tried to do. I think it's best to start at the beginning to show you why I won't be making furry animation memes anymore, specifically because I still animate in my free time. So first and foremost, I've stopped lying to myself about why I did it in the first place. Ignoring the fact I didn't know I was non-binary, I didn't know where I wanted to go artistically, and the fact that I was just young, I started because I wanted to emulate someone I looked up to at the time. I won't name names, but I owe it to this person to say, you were right all along. And I didn't want to face the reality of hearing people call me selfish or unoriginal or whatever you can come up with because I couldn't handle it. So I would refuse to compare myself, and I ignored it so hard I believed it for a time. But the truth is, my neurodivergent brain locked onto this person and his hyperfixations usually go for me. I wanted to consume, replicate, and interact personally with it for as long as I could get serotonin from it. So I did. I emulated them, I put my own spin on it to call it my own, and I joined a community of like-minded people, the animation meme community. Now this isn't to say the memories I shared and, and friends and mutuals I made were in vain. I still think about it sometimes, and I hope you're all doing well. But here and now that it's over, I realize I can't take back who I was. This is going to ring a very familiar and awful bell for someone in particular, but I learned it's easier to accept your past and move forward than pretend it didn't happen at all like I tried to do. There's a lot of people I broke off contact with because I associated them with that time. Before I knew who I was, before I knew why I was doing it, and in my mind it was inherently not me, I quote unquote don't do that anymore. There's still people. Back to the task at hand, it hurts keeping up a mask. It's an oversimplification, but that's the best way that I can describe it. I let a lot of things happen to me from people I looked up to because I felt it wasn't my place to question them. I can't count how many times during my contact with people I cried because I wasn't being treated like a friend, or the hours I poured into making things for them, or the guilt I felt because I was feeling bad about it at all. And a sickening part of me thinks it's still for the better. Because here we are in the future, it's like I never existed in their space in the first place. A part of me is still deeply, deeply upset that they may never feel the same agonizing discord I felt when I messaged them, that will never stay up late at night thinking if they could have done something differently or felt something different, and will never occupy their mind like a lingering bad dream. And the worst part is, it wasn't a bad dream. What made it so conflicting was the simple fact that I never truly knew them to begin with. I knew what content I liked, but that was all. And I guess by extension they had no obligation to meet me head on in friendship either. And I didn't know it at the time, but I took that to heart. It always seemed like I was the exception or the exclusion for some reason. I could never find out why. And it still cuts deep, even now. So because of that, I overanalyzed everything I did. I broke myself down to my bare essentials to look for anything similar, and I threw them aside. In a way, I was kind of suffering from a poison I delivered myself. <laughs> And I worked and changed and changed and worked and worked on myself and ignored red flags for the sake of this new goal, proving myself worthy. And when I say it out loud now, it sounds really fucking stupid. But that's exactly where my brain went. I looked from every angle what I could do to be a better friend, the better person. So I kept going and going and going. And I don't know at what point I stopped. I couldn't take it anymore. It got to the point my hands would shake every time I picked up my tablet to animate. I would get clammy when I streamed and people I recognized joined. I would have to pause voice calls with people because I, was, I started having fits, horrible anxiety fits. It didn't even feel like I was myself anymore. So I mean, I guess to say my goal was accomplished, albeit very horribly and emotionally scarring, but I had to stop. And that was the first step towards getting myself out of the hole I buried myself in. I broke off connection, and then quarantine hit from 2020, and I slowly started truly being myself again. But I can't escape that influence. I can't take back my time, or my tears, or the parts of myself I laid bare, but I can take back my self-control. I can control where I want to go from here. And that's exactly what I'm doing with this video. So... What does this mean for the future? 
Like I said, I won't be posting to this channel anymore, and I have other active platforms for my art now. As much as I want people from here to follow me in other places, please, please bear in mind I'm not the same person as you came to know me from this channel. I just finished saying that my past is a part of me, but it is not me. Not in the present. So I probably won't respond to someone going, OMG, awkward artist? Oh, I, I loved your animations, XD. Oh, oh I think I deadass block you. <laughs> Just please be chill about it. Ah, uh, hi, how are you? Is a great start. I don't sound the same, I don't draw the same, and I don't act the same, but I'm still friendly. Just please don't start asking me for meme collabs or art trades. It just seems really tone deaf. <laughs> but moving forward, I won't come back to this channel. I won't draw these characters anymore. They don't represent me anymore. They don't represent my ideals anymore. And to be fair, part of me realizing and breaking off with the right people was knowing that they never did to begin with and speaking of if i had any last you know final parting messages it sounds like a funeral service <laughs> but i still think about that time sometimes and i wish i could have met y'all when i actually knew who i was and you know not as much as i didn't want to admit to myself a cheap imitation of someone else you know, the highest form of flattery is mimicry, and I didn't realize that at the time, and it hurt too much to fully admit it to myself, because that would mean, you know, admitting to myself that I really am only driven by my neurodivergent brain, and I don't want that for myself. I don't think I ever wanted that for myself. So thank you for making it this far into the video. I'll see you guys on the other side. I'm gonna do this last part of the video in person because why the fuck not? But I've always done face reveals on this channel and it's no surprise, you know? I'm a very open person, or at least I, you know, I, I wouldn't say was. I still am a pretty open person. And I wanted to do this last little farewell in person just to show y'all who I've become, the person I'm actually proud to have grown into and, you know, what was hiding beneath, um, all the stuff that I got myself into back then. But I owe it to myself and to all of you. So thank you for the amazing journey. I really appreciate all of you. I keep saying it for a million times, but I really do. I really do. Y'all are great.